Alrighty, how's it going everybody? Today we are going to take a look at some of the latest and greatest features in Adobe Fresco. And I have to tell you that this is the biggest update that Adobe has done for this spectacular drawing and painting application. So I want to cut right to it. So hello to everybody in the chat. Thank you for joining me. I've got my chat open here so I can say hi. And throughout this, I'll be checking in to see if you have any questions. Um, but let's just jump right into the good stuff. So. Um, those of you who've already updated know that we have a lot going on here in the app. I wanted to highlight a few of my favorite new features that really take this app to the next level. And these include some vector brush features, these include some vector shape features, and also a brand new feature for all of you people who draw with the pixel brushes called Multicolor Select or Multicolor Eyedropper. And uh, I'm going to actually kick things off with that tool because it's a game changer. Uh, so. Here's how it works. Now, you know that you already have thousands and thousands of brushes that you can bring into Fresco. And it comes by default with over 100 uh, pixel brushes, okay, different shapes and sizes and behaviors and so on. But we're going to add this feature here, that, and we have added this feature, that makes it possible to do things you never have seen before in digital drawing and painting. So let's take a look at this. Now, I'm just going to use a regular brush here, go to my basic brushes, nothing exciting, a hard round variable, okay? And I'm going to select a color, and put it down on my canvas. And then I'm going to select another color, put it over here, okay? And then we'll do another one and we'll just put it over there. Alrighty, there you go. Nothing too exciting. However, watch this. Now we know about our touch modifier, which is this little guy that I'm dragging around on the screen here right now. And the touch modifier allows me to do lots of different things with different tools simply by pressing on it or by taking my finger and double tapping it. Okay, now watch this. I'm going to hold it down for a moment. And then with my other finger, I'm just going to hold on the canvas. And you'll notice in the top right corner, I get this little message that says multiple colors. This is telling me that I'm currently selecting multiple colors at once. Okay, if you look at my color picker here on the left, all right, the tiny little circle, the preview window that shows me the color to the left of my color wheel here, you'll see that all three colors, the red, the blue, and the yellow are now my selected color. So what this means is the next time I paint with this brush, look what happens. I'm painting with multiple colors. Pretty cool. Now that's just the tip of the iceberg, all right? Sure, this is, a, this is already in and of itself a neat feature. Okay, but there's so much more you can do with the ability to select multiple colors at once and paint with them, and I will demonstrate some of those for you right now. All right, so let's hide this for a moment. Now, one of the things that people don't like about digital painting, if they're coming from a traditional painting environment, is that they do not get, um, they do not get the feeling of the paint being layered they don't get the feeling of there being enough variety in the brush strokes that they're making. Um, it just feels flat, right? How can you avoid this? Well, multi multicolor selections can help you to solve this, and I'll show you how. I'm going to use a color here, this nice kind of a pink, and I'm going to put down some color using one of my favorite brushes, which is the block stain brush. So I'll just make a nice little block of color there. Now, one, one thing about this brush is it already has some nice little bits of texture and other goodness in there, okay? But I want to take it a step further. I'm going to use a lighter pink now and come over the top of it. And what I'm shooting for here, and now moving to a little darker pink, is enough of a sort of variation in the hues so that when I use the multicolor selection, all right, it's going to be picking up colors that are similar to one another. See this? I can move this around until I get what I like. All right, this looks like kind of a nice area here. It's got a little bit of variation in it. This has quite a bit of variation in it here. Kind of like that. I'll stick with that for now. So the swatch that I've just selected, all right, if I now go to a different uh, brush, let's use the canvas brush flat, for example. Now, when I paint with it, Look at that. It's really subtle, isn't it? But it's just enough variation so that every brush stroke I make makes it feel like I'm putting new paint down on top of paint that's there or that I'm pushing that paint around and kind of blending it. 
even though I'm not, right? This is just a regular pixel brush, regular Photoshop brush that I'm using. But that multicolor selection for my, my uh, color is helping me to make this happen, which is really, really, really amazing. Because as you take this farther, you start to develop custom swatches for yourself that can make it so that your illustrations have this whole new life to them. All right, and don't forget, this works with any pixel brush. So what you can do is you can make one of these kinds of swatches and then you can start playing around with different brushes and see what happens if I use this brush. Okay, this is the bristle scrape brush. See that? Little bit of subtle color variation in every brush stroke that I make. In fact, I'm looking at that right now and I'm thinking that is the way to go. I really like that one. So what I'm gonna do is show you now how you can change the color while retaining all of the hue and saturation and value shifts that you have placed into that multicolor selection that you have made. So we'll start with this pink here. Look at that. Little bit of variation. I want to show you how you can change the color. And this is using the HSB sliders, which if you don't know what that stands for, it's hue, saturation, and brightness. Okay, so watch this. I'm going to open the color wheel. And you notice down here it says HSB sliders under the actual wheel. And if I pop that open, look, I've got my hue slider, my saturation slider, and my brightness slider. Now, I'm gonna change the hue first and look at the wheel, nothing's happening, right? That's because if you use the color wheel, then you're gonna be selecting solid color. So what's cool about the multicolor select is it allows you to select solid color when you need it, or just adjust your multicolor selection swatch when you need that to be adjusted. So check it out. On the left, okay, you can see the little preview circle of the color I've got changing as I slide. So why don't we go to a blue like this, and now I can adjust the saturation of that color, I can desaturate it or make it more saturated, and then the brightness. Okay, so lots and lots of control. And when I paint with this again, okay, it's going to have all of those adjustments being made within the swatch, but now with a different color, okay? And to give a more extreme example of that, what I can do is just bump this up right here, grab another multicolor selection, which is I'm holding down the touch modifier and then with my other finger just calling up my color picker, see that? And now look at the new swatch we made. It has blue on the top and pink on the bottom. So what that looks like when I paint with it is something like this. And I'll switch my brush to make it more obvious here. So let's use the Blair or the block stain. Let's see here. Too many brushes, gang. This is one of my problems. Flat dry, I'll do it. All right, see that? Now, watch what happens when I use the HSB sliders. Come down here and I'm gonna pop it all the way down to this sort of yellow zone, okay? And now when I paint with it, look at this. So what happened? Well, all I did was adjust the hue. I have the same relationship of saturation and brightness as those other colors before. So I can reduce that saturation, right? Reduce that brightness or increase the brightness. Now look at this, completely different. So what's amazing about this is for the first time ever, you can create a multicolor selection. And if you like the relationships that you have in there, you do not have to create a separate swatch to change the color. You can simply use the HSB sliders. And because of Fresco's Adobe color history, look what happens at the bottom. All those multicolor selections that I made, right? Those swatches are saved, okay? You see this down here at the very bottom. I've got different colors, okay? And I've got my solid colors from the beginning, but then those multicolor selections I was making wind up getting saved as well. Okay, now let's check out some other things you can do with this feature. Now, sometimes you wanna paint with the watercolors or the oils and you wanna use multicolor. Guess what, you can. This is again, another game changer. So for those of you who do a lot of watercolor painting and you like to be able to use one color on your brush mixed with another, and then put it down with a lot of water and watch those colors blend together, you can now do that in Fresco, which is insane. So here, I'm gonna grab a watercolor brush. I like to use the flat wash for this, okay, the wash flat. Make it nice and big. 
and we'll use a decent bit of water so I'll put it up to about half and my flow is already set pretty high put some color down already I'm getting some multicolor selection working for me there because I'm using one of those stamps that I already selected that has some slight variation in it look what that does to your watercolors right off the bat even if you're doing a subtle color swatch like this you're already getting a lot of really lovely changes throughout that wash that you create that you could not have gotten before which adds to the realism of that watercolor really amazing and again I can use the HSB sliders so I want to get make it a little more blue pull that blue in there and look this does wonders for the washes that we're using um, but why don't we take it to an extreme and do something really weird with it I'll put some blue over here and we'll grow up to that sort of a pink color again as well put that down and grab a really pale yellow slap that down there some of you might be wondering well Kyle how much of the area of the canvas are you selecting when you use that multicolor selection by using the touch modifier okay guess what you can control it by using zoom this makes it very easy to see exactly how much of the canvas you're going to be selecting so if I wanted to make a swatch that had just a tiny portion of this okay this area that I just painted I would hold down the touch modifier with the zoom that I've got and look I'm not selecting much area there okay but watch this come all the way out here I'm zooming out by pinching with my fingers and now when I select I'm getting a lot more real estate right okay so let's do this now that I've got this selection with the yellow the pink and the blue I've still got my watercolor when I paint with it look at that crazy crazy stuff you can only do this in fresco folks isn't that weird amazing I can just keep making that wetter and wetter I'm just pooling the paint in a circle there pooling it and watch how it continues to move and spread out from that area all right and here's another amazing thing about multicolor selections with the watercolors I can make a custom watercolor brush in a heartbeat I'll show you what I mean all right I'm going to use just my pencil, a default pencil from Fresco, okay? And I'm just going to make a little shape like this. There we go. What is it? Doesn't matter. You'll see what's going to happen here in a second. There's my shape. Put a little bit of color there and there. This is just an abstract little drawing, okay? I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to hold down the touch modifier right with my thumb by the way I'm a, a left-handed person so I like to have the touch modifier down here in the bottom right corner and I use my thumb whenever I need it so I'm holding it down and now I'm going to make a selection here and if I don't get all of the stamp okay I'm going to slide it back out this way here we go and watch this I'm going to take my watercolor brush okay and while I've got the watercolor brush selected, I'm going to hold down the touch modifier, come over here, and do that. So I've just selected that. Now what happens is, because the areas that are not being drawn on, right, are empty, the watercolor brush is now going to only paint with the pixels that were activated when I made that little drawing, which means I've now created a custom stamp for my watercolor brush. All right, now watch. If I were to reduce the amount of water, you'll see this very clearly when I paint with it. See that? What have I got there? That is that stamp that I created, okay, turning itself into a watercolor brush. So now I can come into my brush settings, and all of the things I normally could control for the custom brush that I've made can allow me now to mess around with this brand new watercolor brush. I can increase the scatter like that. I could increase the spacing and make a completely different kind of a brush, right? We can work with the shape dynamics. 
Maybe we want the size jitter to go up. That would change the size of the brush randomly by a certain amount. We could change the angle. Come back and I'll decrease that spacing a little bit. And look what just happened. We just made this brush. But it's not just any pixel brush, it is also a watercolor brush. So you can see that it is still behaving like a watercolor brush and that the water is impacting what happens as I put down the paint. And if you want this to be any color, well, guess what? You can use the HSB sliders, right? So I come down here, HSB. Let's change this. We'll change the brightness and saturation. So now I've got like a nice blue. Paint with that blue. So what this means is you can create your own custom watercolor brushes in Fresco simply by using multicolor selections. This is completely nuts. So anything can be a watercolor brush, essentially, right? Um, and so even though we do give you some really fantastic uh, brushes here out of the gate, I have to say, um, I love the spatter brush, for example, right? But even the spatter brush, I can actually uh, change the multicolor stamp that the spatter brush is using, right? Like this, for example. Or I can create my own custom spatter brush by selecting an area of spatter and then just saying that is my new watercolor brush. And I'll demonstrate for you that, that, that for you right now because I want you to understand what I mean. If I go into my effects brushes here, uh, let's see here. I like the spatter two. All right, I'll just do that. One little hit of that spatter, right? Maybe two, why not? Zoom out, hold down my touch modifier so I can select this whole area. Bloop, there. That's my new stamp. When I come back to my watercolor brushes, okay, and I say, okay, well, I'm gonna use the watercolor wash flat brush. Well, because the selection that I've made is a spatter, okay, all I have to do is come over here, increase the spacing and the spatter, a uh, scatter, pardon me, like that. And now I've got a whole new spatter brush for my watercolors, right? And I'm going to change the scattering even more. I'm going to blow it out like crazy. And shape dynamics, we're going to go even more crazy with the size jitter, crazy with the angle jitter. And we're going to tell that I want to control this with pen pressure. So light pressure means I'm going to have more or less of this scatter. Okay. And then bam, whole new scatter brush, just like that. So if you have any questions about this feature, you gotta let me know because I know it's a lot to cover in just a couple minutes. Um, with multicolor brush, can you use tilt or pressure to vary the color? Very interesting idea, Michael. I love that and I'm going to mention that to the engineers because I think you're onto something pretty cool. Uh, yes, Tim, you can always try out the brush in the preview window, good point. You can try it out in the preview window. When he says preview window, this is what Tim is talking about. So I've got my brush, I go to my brush settings panel, and right up here, I'm just checking it out in that preview window. Handy, isn't it? Can you save the new brush? Eve is asking, can you save the new brush? Eve, don't worry, we're working on that, okay? Yes, you read our minds. Uh, excellent, excellent, excellent. I haven't used Fresco enough, says Andrea. Would those carry over into the future uses of Fresco different projects? Um, I'm not sure I understand the, the question, Andrea, but I'm thinking what you're saying is, would you, it's the same, same thing Eve is talking about, would you be able to save these presets so that you could use them later? They will be saved to the document you're using, um, so they're sticky in that way. As far as future uh, projects, no, they wouldn't be saved, but as I mentioned, we're working on that, okay? Jeff says he'd like to have the preview window a lot larger. Jeff, I agree with you. So we're thinking about that as well. Um, somebody mentioning the yellow look again. Yes, the yellow look is actually intentional. I have fresco, I have a, a, a background that isn't totally white, and the reason for that is I don't like to look at a bright white screen in my face. Um, hope that helps explain that. All right, so what else can you do with this feature? Let's check it out some more. 
I'm going to just clear this away. And I'm going to get rid of some of these layers I don't need. I'm sure some of you know this, but it bears repeating. There are no layer limits in Fresco. So you can just go and go and go building layers until you essentially run out of hard drive space um, or your iPad decides it's done and it just falls apart. Haven't heard of that happening to anybody yet, but. All right, now this means you can also make custom brush stamps on the go with a pixel brush, doesn't it? So for example, let's say I wanted to paint with a leaf, right? And I don't have a leaf brush. Well, let's go ahead and grab a brush I can draw with. So I'll go to my inks and I'll just use the Belgian comics. Okay. And I'll give myself a little stalk here and just paint this leaf shape like that. And one like that. Excellent. Okay. That'll probably be good enough for this little experiment. Then I'm going to come here and just hold down my touch modifier and make sure that I get the whole leaf in there. And if I can't, I'll zoom out a little farther. Remember, you're controlling with the zoom how much you're selecting, right? There we go. So now I've got this brush stamp that is this leaf, and that's my multicolor stamp, okay? I'm going to now use a simple basic brush. I'll come over to the basic brushes and I'm going to use the hard round variable brush, okay? And with the hard round variable brush, I can adjust my brush settings right here. Here's my preview. Is that what I want it to look like? No, certainly not. So what I do first is increase the spacing, okay? Ah, now we're getting somewhere, okay? So increase the spacing, okay, that looks much better. And let's see how we're doing. Okay, okay. Now, for the shape dynamics, I want to make sure that direction is going to be controlling the angle of the stamp. See that? So the direction in which I'm moving is going to rotate that stamp accordingly. And now we're getting a much better result. Let's increase the size jitter. So I'll get some variation in those leaves. And I can flip the Y jitter, okay? This is the Y axis. And what that's gonna do is make it so that occasionally that brush is gonna flip itself. So I'll get the small leaf on the top and the big leaf on the bottom. Now we're already getting somewhere, aren't we? Let's decrease that spacing a little bit and try the brush. Look at that. Now we're getting somewhere. So you can see how quickly I could create a custom brush. Now you'll notice that it's a little off center with the stalk, the stem, Easy to fix. The reason for that is because when I made the selection with the multicolor, I did not center this. I'm, I'm trying to draw an arrow here with this new custom brush. That's funny. Here, I'll switch over to just a basic stamp. There we go. So that's what I'm trying to center, that stock, right? So if I were to then do another multicolor stamp and make sure that the stock, see the little crosshairs that I've got there? I'm just going to center that. There we go. Now when I paint with it, I'm getting much closer to having that stock be where I want it. Right? So that's getting a little bit better. So you can just customize it however you wish. And then again, use those hue, saturation, and brightness sliders. So go for a nice green and paint some, some leaves for yourself. Just like that. And that, of course, is the tip of the iceberg. Anything could be a custom brush stamp that you use with the multicolor selection. So let me clear this away. And I'm sure you could come up with lots of clever ways to use this, but there are a lot of repetitive things you don't want to draw. So if you have some kind of a pattern that you need to put in your art, let's say, for example, you're drawing, uh, you know, I'll do this really quickly. I'm going to grab one of my favorite inking brushes, which is this uh, Blake pen. There we go. So I have this, this gentleman who's very dapper. And he's going to be wearing his little suit. OK. And let's say that the suit 
has a uh, is it hound's tooth? Is that what it, is that what it's called? When it's got that um, sort of zigzaggy pattern to it. Somebody help me out. He's more in the know when it comes to these things. I just know what stuff looks like. I don't necessarily know all the names. Oh, he looks very severe, doesn't he? All right, so here's our guy. And I want to add a pattern like this to his jacket, right? That kind of thing. And if I wanted to paint it, all I'd have to do is make a custom brush. So I'll do a little small one like this. Just make that little V and hold down the touch modifier and select that. Make it a little bigger actually. There we go. I like that, okay. There we go, and then I can go back to that basic brush I was using. And I'm going to use just the hard round brush, for example. Come over here, increase the spacing. Perfect. And then just size that baby down. Boom. And now I can just come in here and do this. Da, 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 da. Look at this. And add that nice little pattern to his jacket. So I think you're starting to see the potential of something like this, right? And one of my favorite demonstrations of how this can be used is the, look at this, I can go really dense with it too. I can just color back and forth. Sorry, I'm getting carried away now, I'm just having fun. You get the idea. One of my favorite demonstrations is how you could do three-dimensional effects with this, right? And an example of that would be, here, I'm gonna grab a nice rich color. I'm just gonna make a circular selection Hold down the touch modifier for a perfect circle. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to paint inside. Let's see here. A little color. Add a little darker color here. There's my core shadow. And then go a little lighter. go and then add a little highlight right there select a little bit of that red and just get some reflected light so a very very so-so job of creating a sort of a spherical look but because time is of the essence here I don't want to go nuts all right now by making this sort of a sphere and then turning it into a multicolor swatch is what I'm, what I'm gonna do here in a second. I'm gonna be able to do this cool three-dimensional thing. So deselect, zoom out, hold down my touch modifier, and let's grab that circle. Now that's my new brush, okay? If I come over here to my basic brushes and use that hard round uh, brush, there we go, hard round variable, Look at this brush stamp preview. Look what's happening there. Crazy, right? And then I paint with it. Holy cow. You're getting this insane 3D looking stamp because I selected the sphere and I'm just dragging that sphere around, but because the spacing is tight, it's giving me this three dimensional painting. So this could be really fun for people who need to do lettering of some kind, right? Woo! Birthday. Now let's zoom in on that so you can see how crazy that looks. How fun is that? Yup. Forgot that. I forgot to cross the T, gang. There, like that. Um. This could be yours for just $450,000. I'll sell it to you. 
Ah, all right, let's clear that away. So, any questions about multicolor selections? I'm gonna check the chat here and see what we got. Does it share to Adobe Libraries? Uh, does what share to Adobe Libraries? Let me just check back on this. I know Tim, thanks so much for helping out with this. Um, Michael's asking about, you only see options for PDF and PNG. You talk about exports? Oh no, not at all. No, look at this. If I go and export a document, you have options for PNG, JPEG, PSD, PDF. So lots of options there. You can do a time lapse. Lots of things you can do to export your image. Um, all right, moving on. Let's see here. Uh, does it share to Adobe Libraries? Yes, your any any cloud document, any cloud PSD that you make in Fresco, or actually any document you make in Fresco is automatically saved as a cloud PSD, which is great. It just travels with you. Perfect penmanship, says Steve, for the R. That was a lucky break for me, Steve. I'm not a letterer. <laughs> Alberto thought you lost track of time. Yes, I'm here early today. Excellent. All right. Well, so that's multicolor uh, selections. Um, there's a little video I made that you can find on the web if you just search for multicolor and my name and, and the word fresco. You should be able to find that video. There's just a few more demonstrations there of how it can be used. Uh, but that should cover a lot of the bases um, for anybody who's curious how to use that. It does, by the way, of course, work with the oils as well. So if I were to grab an oil brush, so why don't we just grab the... Um, Oil paint round, make that a little larger. And we'll use one of those ones from earlier. Look at that, there's some oils. Isn't that crazy? And of course, yes, it's gonna mix as you go. And I can also get ooey gooey paint, chunky. I like to use the chunky brush for that. So we'll grab that chunky brush and then plop, 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 boom. There you go. So yes, oils, it'll work with multicolor which of course just makes that painting experience completely new and wonderful as well. So I really wanted to spend a good chunk of time with this feature because there's just so much to talk about with it. Uh, it's really, it's a real game changer. So play around with it and see what else you can come up with and uh, just uh, see what ways it can en enhance or change the way that you draw digitally because I think that's what it is. It's something that opens a whole door to new possibilities and uh, new ways to express yourself in this medium. Very exciting. All right, so we'll clear that away. Delete that sphere, we don't need that anymore. And delete our pal here with this jacket. I wanna move on to a quick note about brushes. We have added a category of brushes and a lot of people have been um, impatiently waiting for this. I totally get it, I'm glad it's here now. In the pixel brushes, you'll notice we now have mixer brushes. And not only can you import your own mixer brushes into Fresco, and many people have their own, but we did decide to also include a, a nice set of 11 mixer brushes for you that are um, really, really excellent, and they have they cover a range of different kinds of marks you can make, and they too will work with that multicolor stamp. So check it out. Now, what makes mixer brushes interesting? Well, they are pixel brushes, but they also mix color, okay, on the canvas. And if you open up your brush settings, you'll notice that for mixing, you have controls for the mixing. So you can play around with how that affects the, effect, uh, the um, behaviors of the brushes in this category. And that's gonna be a lot of fun for a lot of folks. You also have this option to reload color. Anyone who's used mixer brushes in Photoshop before um, knows how these work. And uh, they are a great thing to add to your brush arsenal here in Fresco. You don't have to import your own if you wanna just use the ones that are defaults. There are so many different marks you can make here. You should be set to go. They, we even have uh, pastels. And the pastels behave similar to a regular pastel only because they're mixer brushes. I put some color down and then grab another color. I get just a little bit of blending in there, which is really lovely. And that is something you can't get with a regular pixel brush. The, the mixer brush is the key to making that work. Grab some yellow, blend that together. So it's subtle, but it makes a big difference for those of you who are interested in emulating pastels here in Fresco. 
And uh, just as before with the multicolor stamps, if you use a stamp that has just a little bit of color variation in it, something like, for example, I'll put some yellow down and grab some orange and just kind of pepper the surface right there with that. And another little kind of a yellow. Very subtle stuff there, but if I make a selection of that, okay, and then draw with it, I'm going to get a really nice result where I'm mixing those little tiny variations in the stroke. Now, I don't know if you can all see that. I could probably make it a little more obvious, but I don't want to go nuts here because I want you to be able to see how subtle that is. There you go. That's a good example of it right there. Pretty good stuff. Okay, so there's a whole category of brushes for you to just go into and go nuts with um, and see what happens when you use them. Don't forget, you can adjust the settings. So open up the brush settings panel, go to mixing, and play with the wetness, play with how much is paint is loaded on, how much it mixes or doesn't mix, okay? With whatever's there on the canvas. See, I've got the mixing cranked up there, so look what that does. It really smudges stuff around. Fantastic. All right, I'll clear that away. So that does it right now for pixel brushes. Um, at the very end of this, I might give you a 30-second preview of the latest category of uh, brushes we have coming to Fresco, which I'm very excited about. Spent a long, long time working on those. But I want to move on to the vector features that we've added. I'm going to start with a vector brush that is near and dear to me. Uh, worked on with a um, good, good guy at uh, Adobe named uh, Jordan, and also with a brilliant uh, artist who's been at Adobe for um, a long time, um, who's also uh, a, a, not just an artist, uh, but a, a sort of a mad scientist, um, if you will. And um, his name's Daiichi. So this is the result of what we were experimenting with. Check this out. The basic velocity taper brush. What does that mean? That's weird sounding, right? What this means is that you can control the taper, the snappy taper, of the line that you draw with speed. So see this? As I zip through the line out towards the end, you can see how snappy those are. Look at that perfect taper. Could not be more lovely. But there's more to it than that. I am placing the stylus down and then snapping away from my starting point. And so what I'm getting is at the beginning, I get a nice solid mark, a solid circular shape at the beginning of the stroke. Now for comics artists and anybody who does inking, this is a big deal because there are times when you want to have a taper at the end, and there are times when you want to have a taper at the beginning, and there are times when you have it, want to have a taper on both ends. And in order to achieve the taper on both ends, what artists will do is they will attack the canvas rapidly and then attack, and then, and then on the way out also use a rapid stroke. So it's sort of this in and out feeling that in a digital environment is a little difficult to replicate, but we've managed to do it here. So I'm going to now show you the difference what happens when I sort of attack the canvas and then let my hand just zip away and come off. Look at this. Same brush, but I'm getting this gorgeous long taper at the beginning and a long taper at the end. Same brush, different approach to how I'm drawing. So rather than putting the stylus down and pausing for a moment and then pulling away like this, that's one way to use it. You can also do that. Same brush. So this is a very natural way for those who do a lot of inking to control what happens with the line that they're drawing. Does it work on the other end as well? Can I start with a taper and end with a rounder, uh, more solid mark? Absolutely. So I'm going to attack the canvas this time and then just pause. So attack and stop for a moment. See, attack and stop, attack and stop. And the longer I wait, you see I get these little little bumps at the end. I don't need those, I can just not wait so long. And all of this, the best thing about it is it can be controlled with your brush settings. So what you do is you go to taper mode right here and I've got it set to velocity. Now you can control how much taper you want. So do you want a nice long skinny taper or do you want a short taper or something in between? And so that's what we have set up here for you. 
So really you can customize this brush to behave exactly the way you want so that you're getting the result you need for your particular style of drawing, for your hand. This is a really big win for people who use vector brushes and like to do inking. Alrighty, now I wanna show you something really cool that you can do with vector brushes now, any vector brush. So I'm gonna do a little drawing for you and I'm gonna do it kind of sloppy. Okay, but I'm not, you know, this is just how a lot of people draw. Okay, boom, boom, boom. Right? There. So you know how when you're sketching, you don't have time to make the lines all perfect and lovely, right? Sometimes you just gotta kinda get them down on the page. So there's a little head that I've drawn, alrighty? What happens when I look at that and say, ugh, what a mess, now I have to draw over it and correct everything. You don't have to do that anymore because we now have this cool feature called vector trimming. And I'll show you how that works. This takes advantage of the touch modifier. Now the touch modifier has two states beyond when it's turned off. So we have the off state right now, it's not doing anything, if it's just sitting there on the canvas. If I hold it down, right, then normally it's gonna to start to work as an eraser. That happens the same with pixel brushes. Whatever brush you're actively using, if you hold the touch modifier down, you temporarily convert it to an eraser. Very cool. But watch this. If I double tap, now it's locked as an eraser. Okay, but instead of just double tapping, I'm gonna tap one more time. Now you'll see the outer ring has turned solid blue. This is the secondary state of the touch modifier. And watch what that does with vector brushes now. I'm gonna take the stylus, I'm gonna take the Apple Pencil, and I'm just going to move it across a line that is hanging outside of an edge that I don't want. So let's look at the tip of the nose. We have these two lines, okay? And I'll just point to them here. It would be easier for me to demonstrate. There we go. Okay. So look here. Right there. See what we've got? Those two overhanging lines, I don't want those there anymore. All right, so I come to my vector brush, double tap and tap once more on that touch modifier. Okay, and now I'm just gonna swipe across there and swipe and look what happens. See what I'm doing? I'm erasing lines that I don't want. Swipe, swipe, swipe. This is called vector trimming and it allows you to clean up your vector work just by swiping across areas that are quote unquote overhangs, right? Don't want these guys. Get rid of them, get rid of them, get rid of that, get rid of that. So Fresco has remembered all these different strokes and it's now paying attention to where they overlap and it's getting rid of those little bits we don't want anymore. It's trimming them off. That's why we call it vector trimming. See that? Perfect. So I could do a sketch with my vector brush and then I can come in and clean it up with vector trim. Bum, 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 bum. Just swiping across and eliminating those extra little bits. That makes a big difference. So there are other ways, of course, it could be useful if you're drawing shapes, right? So let's go back to our normal state. Maybe I wanna draw a triangle. All right, well, just vector trim off those little bits. Whoops, there we go. Vector trim off these little bits and there's a nice triangle, right? So those of you who are doing architectural stuff or any kind of uh, shape-based drawing, you no longer have to worry about cleaning it all up painstakingly. With the eraser, you can just swipe right across. But there's more you can do with it as well. If I scribble across a line three times, just one, two, three, a little zigzag action, right? One, two, three. It'll erase that line altogether, like that. So look again at the triangle and watch. One, two, three, disappears. 
So you can completely eliminate a stroke by just scribbling across it three times. So what does this mean for vector artists? Well, this gives you a whole other way to work additively, subtractively, as well as to save time when you're cleaning up drawings that you're doing and maybe not having to go through the step of doing a sketch and then a drawing on top of it and so on. You can actually just go for, you know, bits that you don't need and attack them and save yourself some time and energy. But it could also lead to things like new styles that you want to play with. And um, I, I just leave it up to all of you to, to figure out how cool that could be. But that's vector trimming. Um, and I'm gonna check the chat here for a second, see if we have any questions about how this works. Let's see. Uh, let's see, da, da, da. mixer brushes, another version of live brushes, says Paul. Paul, no, mixer brushes are their own category of brushes. They're, um, they're like Photoshop brushes with the addition of the ability to mix a little bit of paint. The live brushes actually have that three-dimensional texture and lighting that you would get with real oil painting or with thick acrylics, okay? So there's a difference there. Yeah, mixer brushes are very good for landscape art. Maharshi, I agree with that. Uh, let's see. Am I using a stylus, a Wacom tablet? No, I'm on the iPad. All right, let's see who else has got questions here. Jeff, Daichi's awesome. Yes, Daichi is a mad scientist, genius, great illustrator. Can't say enough good things about him. Truly one of my heroes at Adobe. I, I really admire that guy. And he and I had a good time working on that vector to uh, that uh, vector taper brush, which is excellent for inking. All right, folks, excellent. So Sam says, holy cow, I needed this. A lot of people will enjoy this feature, yeah. Um, okay, so got a few minutes left and I wanna talk to you about vector shapes. So let's hide this for a moment. Vector shapes are gonna just blow things up for you in a great way. And what I mean is, in addition to basic shapes, I'm just gonna come over here and show you what we have. We have just basic shapes that I can put anywhere on the canvas, okay? And I can, of course, transform them, right? Scale from the center. We're using my touch modifier right now, but here's a vector shape. If I wanna fill it and place it on the canvas, it'll ask me if I want to, let me make a new layer, there we go. It'll ask me if I want it to be a vector layer or a pixel layer. So of course, if I say vector, then if we take a look at that, it's gonna be infinitely scalable, right? As you would expect, size it up, size it down, whatever. And now I have this nice vector shape on the canvas, right? And I can just draw with it. I can vector trim, do all the things you'd expect me to be able to do, right? And that is now a vector shape on my canvas. You can also erase with vector shapes. So why don't I grab one, put it right here, and just say erase, and look what happens. Gone, right? And yes, it erased it perfectly as a vector. However, that's just the tip of the iceberg. If I open up my shapes again, you'll see we have basic shapes, of course, polygons. I can add sides to it, right? From triangle up to an octagon. But in addition to squares and circles, as you expect, come back here for a moment and look what's, look at this down here. It says library shapes. Drawings, vectorized, fairy fresco, winter 2019. These are libraries that I made in my CC libraries, my creative cloud, li uh, cloud libraries. These are shapes that I saved from Adobe Capture. So, for example, this is a drawing I made using one of my pixel brushes. And I just popped it open in Capture. Capture is free, by the way. Capture is a free app. I opened it in Capture, and I said, I want to save this as a shape. Saved it to my libraries. And now, when I come over here to Fresco, there it is. And not only is it saved as a shape, but this is a vector shape. It's infinitely scalable. So it was a pixel drawing that I made. I popped it open in Capture. I made some adjustments to the, the uh, contrast. And I said, I wanna save that as a shape. It saves it, it adds it to my library, and then magically it just appears here in Fresco, ready for me to use. So I'm gonna say I wanna fill that. And let's take a look at it. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see. All vectors. Infinitely scalable, right? 
but came from a drawing I did with one of my pixel brushes. So why don't we just take a look at that really quickly. I could do a drawing with something that has some, let's use dry media. It's got a lot of texture to it, right? See that shape like that? Okay, and then I can just save that. So I'll do a quick export, save it to my photos. And then I can come over here to Adobe Capture and I can say, hey, I wanna grab a photo from my camera roll, right? And here's the most recent photo. There, yeah, perfect, great, shape. I wanna make it into a shape. Yes siree, Bob. I say, okie dokie, there it is. I can crop it, I can smooth it, I can do all kinds of bits and pieces. I say save. And I can save it in drawings vectorize, right? This is my little library. And I save it. Now, come back over here to Fresco. And here's the original drawing I did, look. Pixel brushes, so of course it's gonna get pixelated when I zoom in on it, right? Let's hide that for a moment. Come to my vector shapes. And I go back here, I go to drawings vectorized, and look what's there, folks. Fillet, vector. Okay, let's take a look at that thing. Whoops, check it out. Now I have that same drawing as a vector drawing. So a million things you could do with this, add assets, add things, stamp to your canvas, fill them. Um, there's just so much you can do with this. You can have instant vector shapes to fill into your artwork. You, vector artists are gonna go nuts with this feature. Uh, this is so much to be able to do, to do with this. I, I would probably be able to spend another hour just showing you a workflow with vector shapes, but I don't have that hour for you right now. Um, I really wanted you to see though how that works. And I wanted to let, uh, save the last minute for any questions anybody might have. Um, so I know probably people have a lot of questions. Uh, let's see. So cool, says Vanessa. Yes, it is awesome, says Bobby. Really sweet, says Steve. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yes, this is this is really one of those features that artists are gonna take advantage of and find new ways to use. And of course you can do it with photography, which I think is really cool. Take a photograph of a friend and then vectorize it in capture and, and port it over as a shape. Um, I did line work for example, if I go back to my shapes here just for a moment, here's some line work I had done with some charcoals and I just wanted to try them out in fresco as vector shapes. So I ported them over to capture, it took me 30 seconds and brought them over and um, filled that as a vector layer. And look what you got there. So that charcoal gets converted into these cool vector paths. Infinitely scalable. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, yeah, Tim's right. In uh, 30 minutes, we have Kathleen joining us with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. This is the first stream of the week. And don't forget, tomorrow, you're going to see all kinds of cool new features in our flagship apps. I mean, amazing stuff in Photoshop and in Illustrator and so on. Um, uh, you're going to have Paul and, and Jason and Terry uh, showing you some good stuff. I believe Howard will be online showing you some great stuff. So I wanted to take up this time to show you some of these amazing new things we have in Fresco. So just to recap, we've got um, multicolor selections, vector shapes, vector trimming, and we have the velocity taper brush. We have mixer brushes now. Uh, there are some other little bells and whistles that we've added uh, that people will, will appreciate. For example, the ruler now has measurements on it. So this ruler, here, I'll just rotate it. Let me zoom in here, set it to an angle, and I'll grab a pixel brush, and when I draw with it, watch what happens. As I'm drawing, it's telling me how many pixels I'm going. See that? So if I say, oh, I wanna go 341 pixels, then I wanna move the ruler and say, I wanna draw another 341 pixel line somewhere else. Well, I can just watch that ruler and slow down when I get close to where I wanna be. And that can make, allow me to draw lines that are the same length. I can measure if I'm doing more architectural or uh, product design or something where I have to be more precise. The ruler is telling me how many pixels I'm drawing, okay? And it's sticky with the canvas, which is excellent. So I can just slide it over a nudge and get tons of control with that, which is great. 
Any other questions? Let's see. Brushes sneak. Tim, do I have time for a brushes sneak? Um, I think I was supposed to get off by 11.30, but if you think I have time, I'm happy to do a brushes sneak. Very happy to do it. Um, because, yes, I do have a little sneak. actually got two sneaks for you. So why don't I delete some of these. Get rid of these bad boys here. Bye, 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 bye. Turn off that ruler. Um, yeah, the two brushes sneaks I was going to show you were, one, I wanted to mention that the summer brushes for 2020 are going to be out in about a week or so in North America. And then two or three weeks after that, they'll be available internationally. And uh, that's, a, that's over 30 brushes in that set that are phenomenal. And I have some of them, I believe, loaded in the library here. Can't remember if I brought them into the latest build. I have an internal build here of Fresco that I update every week. So let's see, summer 20, there we go. It's gonna bring those in and load them though. Um, this is a, a brush set that'll be available to everybody who's got CC, really wonderful. And Tim says he's pretty sure I still have 25 minutes. Oh, awesome. Okay, we got time, we got time, we got time. And that's good too, because if you have any questions about what I've shown you or you missed part of the beginning of the stream with the multicolor, I can review a little bit of that with you and for you as well. Uh, but the summer brushes are coming, and this is a really cool blend of brushes that are effects brushes, different kinds of special effects, but also brushes for drawing and painting, as always. Um, but I'm particularly excited about some of these effects brushes. Um, I'll start with the bricks brush, because this one just has a great look to it. Remember, all these work, of course, with multicolor. Any pixel brush you import as a Photoshop brush will work with multicolor stamping. But I'll use a solid color here just to demo this. Oops, got to make a layer. There we go. So this is that bricks brush. Lovely. Now this is taking advantage of color dynamics, as you can see. Color dynamics meaning that I'm allowing the hue and saturation and value of that color swatch to be slightly modified with every new instance of a stamp of the brush. So why is it called the bricks brush? Well, because it reminded me of like a brick wall when I was painting with it this way. So good textural brush there, lots of potential for anybody who likes to just fill an area with color that isn't totally solid and that has some nice texture in it. Of course, I could always add a little multicolor action to that and then look what you get. You can only do this in fresco, folks. Isn't that crazy? This is the only place where you can do crazy weird stuff like this. Look how crazy that looks. Isn't that nuts? Looks like the skin of some kind of alien or something right there. I love that. Ooh, that's weird. Yeah, so maybe it's a, or a dragon. So if I were painting a dragon, this could be the scaly texture of that dragon's body, tail or whatever. I love that. Okay, so that's the bricks brush playing around with multicolor stamps again, folks. And then we have the cardboard wash. Cardboard wash is, of course, a wash brush that has a nice cardboard texture to it. I'll zoom in so you can see that. Really lovely wash brush. Variations on that, we've got a cardboard wash too. This one's more brushy. Charcoal is a sort of a weird charcoal-y kind of a brush. Great for drawing. Very textural, textured. Woo. Uh, Dotty Pinwheel is just a weird brush like this. You can just quickly fill in an area like that. Great for comics, I would imagine. But, you know, all kinds of ways to use it. Hey, by the way, there's a video I made. If you just go to YouTube and search for my channel, Kyle Webster, you'll find a nice 30-minute brush preview of these brushes. And I really get into it with those and show you the many ways uh, that you can use them. Fresh Cut is a nice inking brush. There's a variant of that as well. And you know, the thing you'll notice about these brushes is that in Fresco, uh, they are so fast. There's just no lag. You know, this is a 300 pixel brush that I'm drawing with right now. Right, and it is chock full of settings and behaviors and dual brush mode and all these other things, but you're not gonna see any lag when you draw with it. It's as zippy as can be. 
And of course I had to throw in some more halftone brushes because you know I love the halftone brushes. So this one is the lattice brush. You can go all the way from these little tiny dots up to that and then through this lovely pattern until you get to solid black like that. There's also a halftone doily brush and I joked about the name of this. I was watching Portlandia and there's that really funny sketch with Jeff Goldblum who owns a doily store and they come in to buy some doilies and there's a funny exchange. So it's just reminded me of this pattern you get on certain doilies. What's a doily, Kyle? Oh, go to a bed and breakfast. You'll see one. Okay, Impressionista is a nice Impressionist brush. I'll use this with multicolor because it's so weird. Look at that. Ooh. Here, I'll put a solid color so you can really see what it's doing. So what is the Impressionista brush? Well, this is a great brush for Impressionistic kind of painting. And it pairs well with another brush that I've added to this set, which is inspired by our good friend Claude Monet. And let's see if I can find it. Here it is. Water lilies. There you go. So there is your dose of impressionism for the day. Right there. Can't go wrong with these, folks. Go ahead and do some master copies of some Claude Monet paintings. I think you'll enjoy those. All right, let's see. I'm, uh, you're digging this brush. Thanks, Alberto. Xerox brushes might be my favorite one-off brush pack, says Kathleen. Hey, Kathleen. Uh, yeah, those are those are fun. You know, I've never even played with those in Fresco. Shame on me. Mallory says, haven't used Fresco much. This is on my radar for today. Well, I hope it is, Mallory, because you're missing out on some fun stuff. You just got your iPad Pro. Awesome. Excellent. Good for you. Um, well, if you have any questions, you know how to reach me. I'm on Twitter, at Kyle T. Webster. Um... Hit me up on Twitter. Folks, on Twitter, I'm probably the most responsive when it comes to any kind of questions about anything having to do with digital painting and so on. Fresco, uh, brush stuff. I just use Twitter. That's my platform of choice. Even though it can be a cesspool and a nasty place, um, I found it's the best place to stay in touch with people regarding this kinds of these kinds of things. This is the Slash Brush. I like this for foliage and for drawing and painting leafy stuff. Especially because you can size it really big, right? Whoa, I don't know about that. There we go, like 1300. Look at this. By the way, the original stamps I use for these are massive. So you can, in fresco, make them this big, you know. This is a 1300 pixel brush. And look how nice and sharp that is. But I can also make it really teeny tiny. Come across there, do some darker stuff. You can see how good this would be for somebody who's doing a nice green background full of vegetation and whatnot. Right? Good stuff right there. That's the slashy brush. There's also a variant of that. And we have Spladoosh. Spladoosh is a follow-up to a, another brush I'd made for nice splishy splashy stuff. I'll zoom in so you can see how lovely that is. Look at all that variation you get in there with the splashiness of it, right? See that? No two marks are the same. That's what I like about this. And again, make it big, you know, go up to 1700 pixels if you want. It can handle it. Quickly fill in your canvas with some lovely texture. Maybe use a lighter color here and there. Ooh. And go for a nice dark, rich splatoosh. See that? This is the kind of thing I feel like, you know, you could just, if you got one of those jobs where you're like, oh boy, uh-oh, I've got to create a trade show banner or something, right? Need some cool pattern in the back. Hey, just grab the splatoosh. Whoop, five minutes. Take that money and run. Nobody has to know, right? All right, let's move on to some of the drawing brushes. There, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Old Fence, this is just a great uh, textural brush. Why is it called old, fe old Fence? Well, check it out, see? It's like you're painting over an old fence. I like this one a lot too. Let's clear that away. And I wanna show you some of the drawing brushes we have. So anybody who knows Bob Peak, 
brilliant artist, 70s, 80s um, illustrator. I made this brush and I'm calling it the Pob Beak. Ha ha. Uh, but for those of you who've seen the way he draws, uh, you will be familiar with the sort of quality to the line that he uses and you'll recognize why this brush is named this way. So yeah, this is this is a great one for that scritchy, scratchy kind of line that we would see in um, those ad drawings that he would do. I think he was probably inspired by Austin Briggs and some of those other artists who did some ad art in the 50s. You know, but yeah, this is this is a fun one. And now look, I'm doing actually same brush, same brush, but I'm angling it to draw the hair, and using more pressure. When I say angling it, I mean I'm tilting my stylus so that it's not vertical. Kind of moving it away from vertical. So like here's vertical, vertical. I'm tilting it this way. And that exposes and exposes uh, more of this texture, and allows me to add those cool lines for the hair. So same brush, just changing the way I draw with my hand. That's it, right? And just like that, you're gonna get a nice drawing. So that is the Bob Peak brush, named after Bob Peak. Brilliant. Look up his stuff if you're not familiar with it. Really good stuff. Okay. And in addition to that, we have, let's see, where, we, where is it? Uh, let's see, this might be an incomplete set because I hadn't yet loaded everything. Nope, here's the Briggs photocopy. That's what I was looking for. Uh, speaking of Austin Briggs, this is a great drawing brush. It's called the Briggs photocopy brush. And it just has this really lovely quality to it. No line is the same as the last. Here I am exhibiting again that behavior, demonstrating that behavior that comes with the texture coming through when I use tilt of my stylus. Same mark, I'll make the same mark tilting vertically. Look at the difference, see that? So you go from this to that. So tilting and then not tilting, all with the same brush. So lots and lots of good stuff you can do with this, right? Emo. I went to see this Screamo band when I was like 23, 24, or something like that, in Georgia, one time visiting my brother. And I could only take like five minutes of it and had to go, had to leave, couldn't do it. But my, my ears are probably thanking me now for leaving that day. Okay, so lots and lots and lots of good stuff. That should be out in about a week or two in the North America and then throughout the world a couple weeks after that. It takes a while for everything to roll out internationally. But in the time that we have left, let's see, you got um, about 10 minutes left. Uh, I do want to give you a little sneak of another brush set that is coming to Fresco and that is the Charcoals. And um, let's see if we have any more questions. I've been not paying attention to the chat here. Kathleen says, great for visual development. Uh, yeah, a lot, of the, a lot of these brushes that have the more uh, special effects and textural qualities and things are great for, for viz dev work, for concept art, story art, because uh, you can just quickly suggest something, but in a way that's interesting enough and not repetitive enough that it really does the trick for getting across this idea that you have for your story. Um, so yes, I agree. And uh, reminds you of Pascal Campion's work. I love Pascal's work. He did a great New Yorker cover a few weeks ago, if you hadn't seen it, of a delivery worker delivering some food in New York. Um, that was a good one. 
Yeah, Miguel, it's amazing how technology has helped bring out the artist in everyone. I agree, and that's something that I have to say um, Adobe really stands behind, and I'm one of the reasons I'm excited about working for this company is for that very reason, because I do go to meetings where people literally start the meeting saying, how can we make people enjoy drawing and painting more? And that is literally the whole point of the meeting, so that's pretty cool. Uh, ben Sean, yeah, Kathleen, Ben Sean. There was a Ben Sean brush that I released in last the last uh, brush set, or might have been two brush sets ago. Could have been the spring 2019 um, brush set. I'll let, wait for that to load. I think that might have had the Ben Sean brush in it. Uh, let's see, it was the Sean brush, I called it. So that'll be the last on this list. Let's see. There it is, Sean. Yeah, so... This is just for Kathleen here. But anybody else who knows Ben Sean will recognize this. Ben Sean style. Zoom in so you can get a good look at that. That is the Ben Sean brush. It goes super skinny. It goes super thick and everything in between. Boop, 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 boop. Ben Sean. I am not Ben Sean. But look up Ben Sean, S-H-A-H-N. If you wanna see some really lovely posters from the 60s, and I think also from the 50s, if I'm not mistaken. Neat stuff. Uh, yeah, he's, he's really, Iconic, iconic work, iconic stuff, iconic figure in the arts and graphic design world too. Um, okay, so brand new category of brushes coming to Fresco. Can't say when, but it should be definitely by uh, early fall. These are now being tested by folks internally and I think it's, it's certainly worth giving you a little peek at how they look. I spent a long time uh, working on these. Uh, Kathleen says she missed that. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, but they're there, go ahead and grab them. 2019 spring update. I should mention too, folks, sorry. Anybody who's got the CC subscription, Creative Cloud subscription, uh, subscription ugh, you can grab any of the updated, uh, the updates that I made. So spring 2019, um, spring 2020, summer 2018, uh, winter 2019, these brush sets are all saved on the brush downloads page when you go to get new brushes. Um, in Fresco, to get new brushes, you just tap on your list of brushes down here and you'll notice there's a little plus sign at the bottom of the list. If I tap on that, I can say get more brushes and it'll take me to the sign-in page where I sign in with my, my Creative Cloud um, account. And when I sign in, it takes me to a brush page with which has over 1,800 brushes that you can grab and download. So that's really fantastic. Alrighty. So here's what's coming. And I know a lot of people have been wanting these and I'm excited for you. Look what it says right under the word basic. Charcoal. Yay! Yes, charcoal brushes. Okay, so I, like many of you, was never satisfied with the charcoal brushes that I, I had made for, for the uh, Photoshop uh, brush library. I mean, some of them are okay for certain things, but I really wanted to see if I could get closer to what I love drawing with, which is vine charcoal. Using vine charcoal when I teach life drawing and portraiture at the UNC School of the Arts here where I live is just, it's such a great medium to play with and draw with. And I decided to really dedicate some time to figuring out how to make those work uh, here in Fresco and in Photoshop as well. So I also wanted to add some new charcoal pencils that feel really, really excellent. And so let's take a look at these, huh? You've got just a couple minutes left here. So we'll start with a pencil, okay? Let's look at the charcoal pencil. I gotta zoom in a bit so you can really see this. I'm gonna go to 120% zoom. So we're getting a nice, tight look at this pencil. Look at this. 
That is a charcoal pencil, if ever I've seen one. I'll zoom in even closer. You can really get a nice look at that. Charcoal pencil. Now, this charcoal pencil allows you to tilt the pencil and get a thicker line and shade, just like the default pencil that we have here in Fresco, which is great. And of course, it'll respect the angle at which I'm holding the stylus and the direction as well. And these are just some of the kinds of lines you can make. But I can also get a really, really nice fine line like this. Everything I could do with a regular charcoal pencil, I can do with this one. So light pressure, I can really get a nice light, uh, light mark like this. So for that building up of the tone, you know, I can take my time. I can sketch lighter. And I can come in there and start to shade that, build that up. See? This is the real deal. This is the new charcoal pencil. It's everything I've wanted in a charcoal pencil in a digital environment. Some, since day one, I just had to take the time to really develop it and experiment to make it happen. So this is the good stuff. Turn it on its side and really go to town with shading. Look at that, nice and dark. Shaking my whole iPad while I do this because I'm going so, so hard with the pencil. There we go. That is the charcoal pencil. Now, there is a variant of that. So let's take out the variant right here. Now the variant, anyone who is watching this right now might be saying, I don't see any difference. Well, folks, you have to draw with it. That's all I can tell you. I wouldn't have included a variant if there wasn't a significant difference in how this brush feels to draw with. And so when you pick this up and you play with it, you'll notice right away that there's a slight softness to it that is a little bit different. The texture is a little bit different as well. The range from thick to thin is a little bit different as well, um, but it's really delightful. Uh, let's check in here in the chat and see what we got here. Let's see, second generation. Oh, we're talking about some tech stuff here. Yeah, different uh, iPads and whatnot. Does Fresco only work on the new iPad? No, 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 certainly not. You can use it on many, many, many iPads. Um, yeah, many, many, many. All right, now to, even though these are wonderful and exciting, I want to check out these vine charcoals. Vine charcoal, what is it? If you haven't used it, vine charcoal is this delightful, soft charcoal that you buy in sticks that you, you just can do figure drawing with, and it is just so soft and lovely. Um, I cannot tell you how much I love this medium. And I'm so excited to have it here in Fresco, finally. After years of playing around, trying with no success to get to a point where I could make really convincing vine charcoal uh, tools. Uh, we are now at a point where they are where they need to be and they are so fun. So yes, this is one of them. This is the very first. Now I'm gonna zoom in so you can see all that texture in there. And look, you can get a nice fine line, thick line. Look at that. Shade with it. Okay, see all that lovely stuff you can do? Excellent. But the good news is that there are five of these, each with their own awesome, unique quality. And anybody who's ever used vine charcoal will recognize all the differences in how these feel when compared with any other drawing medium. There is a softness to it. There is a really, really special way that these work. It just feels like nothing else you've ever seen. And um, I just can't wait for people to try these. I sometimes worry about giving a little brush preview a little too early because then people say, oh no, well, I want it right now. And I say, don't worry, it's coming, I promise. It's on the way, okay? It's coming. But yeah, there's another one. 
So when I designed these brushes, I made the brush stamps enormous, gang, which means, yeah, let's just zoom in so you can really see that nice texture in there, which means that even though this is quite large already, it's 70 pixels and I can get a nice big mark like this. Look how rich and dark that is. This is nice, deep, dark vine charcoal. But I can also pop that up. Look at this. I'll just go up to like 150 pixels, for example, or somewhere in that vicinity. And still, no problemo. All of that comes through just fine. These are high res brush stamps, okay? Clear that away. Let's take a look. This is a, a nice one, the Vine Charcoal 3. It's got its own different kind of texture to it. And again, I can make it bigger and really just go to town with the shading. Anyone who's ever used Vine uh, Charcoal will notice things like this. If I just zoom in on the left here, where it'll break apart and give you these kinds of streaks sometimes. And that's because of the way that the charcoal has these little, um, these little uh, uh, sort of, not cuts is not what I'm trying to say, but um, th the charcoal itself has a grain to it and it'll split apart throughout the stick itself. And you'll sometimes catch one of those when you're drawing. I captured all that stuff. I went really to town with these. The level of detail is something I'm very excited about. And so anyway, there are two more of them and they're each different in their own way. Great for drawing. You gotta feel them, they're buttery smooth. Highly recommend, by the way, that when you're doing using these brushes, turn your pressure, pressure sensitivity down to the lowest setting, light. Okay, right here in the input for app settings. Turn it down to the lightest, uh, lowest setting for light. In fact, for Fresco, generally speaking, I would recommend that because the Apple Pencil is a really tight drawing environment just by default. It's kind of, you got to press down a little bit to get a mark sometimes. I like to go a little lighter on that side, give you more range of control, feel better. So anyway, well, folks, uh, thank you for joining me. And let's see if there's any questions here before I go. I wonder if this is the way figure drawing classes are now. Yeah, Miguel, uh, you know, it depends. Um, Sometimes they have that people allow iPads. On the other hand, uh, you know, there's privacy issues with the model that people are concerned about, and that's definitely a reason to not have iPads available. But um, I've seen people use iPads in figure drawing classes, so it can be done. Yeah, uh, anyway, we, we covered everything that's new in, in, in Fresco, at least that, that I wanted to show you. There are still six or seven other amazing features that we added, uh, and it's worth checking out. So just type in, do a little uh, Google search, latest features, Adobe Fresco. You'll find this great page that's been put together that explains it, but the multicolor stamp, uh, stamps are amazing. Multicolor selections, what a, what a revolution that is. It works with the watercolors, works with the oils, all kinds of things to do there. Vector trimming, amazing. And the vector velocity taper brush, really great for those inkers out there who wanna play with that, phenomenal. Um, I mentioned uh, we have mixer brushes now, and you see what's coming as well. We got these charcoal brushes coming. And we have clipping masks on the way and uh, some other really cool things. So yeah, thanks for checking it out. And I guess I'll see you all very soon. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for joining me and have a good rest of your day. More streams are on the way. And tomorrow, stay tuned for those big streams on Photoshop and Illustrator and Premiere and uh, XD and all, all kinds of good things, I believe. So everybody take care. See you next time.